Hello everyone, um, welcome. Thank you for joining this week's Make Your Mark webinar. Um, this week we're going to be talking about waste and recycling. Uh, so the aim of today's session is to give businesses information on the importance of recycling and smart waste management um, and also talk about how to reduce the quantities of solid waste that are being deposited in landfills. Um, so we're really, really lucky to be joined by two amazing speakers today. Um, so we have Edward Van Rienen, Associate Director of Sustainability and Environment at Bywaters, and Zinnia Harris, Managing Director at First Mile. Now, I think um, they're both going to put their cameras on and say a little hello and personal introduction um, for you all. This is where I'm on tenterhooks while we, uh, there they are. Hi, both. Um, so over to you. Do you want to do a little bit of an introduction, um, Ed? Fire away. Morning. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Um, great to again um, have some engagement with Planet First. We've been um, pre presenting and and doing work in the City of London for a number of years now. I enjoyed your awards evening last week. Um, I thought you all dressed up very nicely, so I put my jacket on this morning. <laughs> Excellent work. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Um, thanks for that lovely introduction. Um, Zinnia. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Zinnia. I'm from First Mile, and I will largely be chatting to you today about some sustainability in the waste and recycling chain, and also what your business can do to help reduce impact. Amazing. Thank you. Um, and we're going to hear more from Ed and Zinnia in a minute, but I'm just going to do a very quick bit of housekeeping. Um, so you'll have joined um, with your cameras on, um, on and on mute. Um, that's totally fine. I think um, everyone should be fairly um, used to that by now, but we're all good. We're in the webinar, so um, that's fine. Um, if you can put any hellos or chat in the chat, um, there's a little um, icon at the bottom. But if you have any questions, please can you go to the Q&A icon and put any questions in there, um, because when we get to the end, we're going to leave a chunk of time to make sure that we get a chance to go through all of your questions there. Um, and if you see somebody else asking a question that you're also interested to know the answer to, you can upvote on that question. So it gets bumped to the top of the list, um, which makes sure that we um, answer the most popular questions when we get to the Q&A section at the end. Um, so questions in chat, any hellos, intros you want to, uh, sorry, questions in the Q&A, and then any hellos or intros you want to do in the chat. Um, and other than that, I think um, that's probably all the housekeeping from us. Um, so in terms of what we're going to cover, I've done a very quick introduction. Um, Ed's going to talk us through what happens to our waste. He's going to talk about some of the key issues, including food waste. But then we're also very lucky to get a tour of um, the Bywaters facility. So that's going to be really exciting. Um, bear with us on the tech when we get there, because we're going to do a bit of flicking between each, um, each of our screens for screen share. So um, bear with us when we get there. Um, and then Zinni is going to talk to us about, as she mentioned, um, the problem with our waste and why we should recycle as well as giving us some business and um, some actions that businesses can take and then we're going to make sure we leave a good chunk of time for q q a at the end oh sorry um followed by closing remarks and then afterwards if people want to come we'll do a 30 minute webinar session afterwards so i'll launch a poll and if enough people want to come along then we'll move over into a zoom meeting afterwards for a quick bit of networking 30 minutes to kind of catch up and ask any further questions um, so on that note, I'm going to hand over to Ed, who is going to talk through some slides and then we'll move on to your facilities tour. So Ed, over to you. Uh, unmute. Grand, thank you very much. Um, so a bit, a bit about Biowaters. Um, we are a, a family run, very well established waste and recycling business operating around the UK and um, we've got a, a primary foothold in London where, where we operate two dedicated facilities. In fact our recovery facility um, which we're going to do the virtual tour of is one of the largest in London. It's um, a, a, a licensed to receive 650,000 tonnes of waste per annum and we're processing um, a, a, amongst other things dry recycling but 20,000 tons of plasterboard as well. Um, and we, we receive recycling not only from businesses around London, but also from local authorities. So nearby authorities such as Hackney and Tower Hamlets, they come and tip off at our facility after they've done their clearances around the, the households and flats um, around our neighborhood. And actually I, I live in Hackney, so my recycling 
goes back to our MRF, um, gets separated out and sorted, and then goes on for reprocessing and, and closing the loop. Um, we have our own fleet of Euro 6 vehicles. So the new uh, ultra low emission zone uh, legislation has come in. It, it means um, we, we have to operate um, at the, the strictest levels in the city of London. So our fleet of 65 lorries um, is at that, uh, that specification. We have dust carts like you see with a little icon on the screen and you're all quite familiar with from, from our residential collections, but also skip vehicles and rolling off vehicles which collect larger waste compactors from big uh, skyscrapers and hospitals around uh, London. We operate the, the site 365 days, uh, 20, 24 seven. Um, and we have um, a, a, another facility um, which allows for some contingency on the construction waste. I've got a picture of um, a computer screen there with um, some reporting because these days information is key so we can drive behavior change on a site basis, um, introduce new recycling streams like food waste um, or coffee ground recycling and monitor those and, and uh, see improvements. We also have um, a solar panel array, it's sort of the largest retrofit solar panel array on the roof of our 10,000 square meter facility, um, which powers the operation. And we're seeing the industry is, is, is increasingly moving towards um, a, 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 a more sustainable approach. Okay, on to our next slide. Um, I will talk you through um, just a few of the, the key recycling streams. So dry mix recycling, DMR, as you see the acronym there is stored in appropriate containers important to have signage and color segregation so it's super easy to use for uh, building users we then collect that on the vehicle then it comes back to east london um, we're located close to the a12 near, near bromley by bow and then goes through the sorting process we segregate into 11 different um, streams of, of plastic using um, a combination of of different uh, sorting methodologies and also some uh, manual intervention. So we'll see more detail um, when we do the facility tour in a, a couple of minutes. I just want to talk about food waste next because it really is um, a, a, a big a big issue. Um, if food waste were a country, it would be the third biggest emitter behind the United States and China. Um, it's it's something that uh, the the UK government has been doing something about um, for a number of years with uh, in initiatives like the Love Food Hate Waste campaign, which was la launched in two thousand and seven. Um, and uh, Im imminently, um, there 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 will be legislation that that um, will uh, forbid food waste from going to landfill. Already, that's the case in in, in Scotland, but but um, the, the signal of intention from government in the UK is that it's also going to move that way. So what happens um, to best treat food waste? Um, it goes through a process called anaerobic digestation. So basically, um, microorganisms are activated um, to break down the food in a controlled environment. So you might have seen some capped domes um, on, on farms because it's, it's widely employed in agricultural use, particularly on cattle farms to uh, digest the, the, the slurry that's coming off the farms. And it's quite an established technology. It's been around um, since the 1800s. And uh, I, I looked last night, the first application in the UK was to power um, some lighting in Exeter, and that was AD from, from sewage. So it's used quite widely in sewage application. So what happens with the food waste? It's depackaged when it goes through. So your, your, your food can have some packaging around it, um, ideally not, but, but it can, can do so. It's depackaged and then moved into um, three different chambers and uh, stored for a period of 72 hours while this natural anaerobic um, breakdown process occurred. Um, the, the byproduct of that is methane. Um, they're able to then export methane to the grid. Quite a significant amount of, of methane goes back into the grid. Um, and interestingly, they actually have to add um, that gas smell, that, that scent that you get, um, that, that we all know. Um, and that's a safety mechanism, actually. So that's, that's pushed back into the grid. They use combined heat and power to, to power its own operations. So that's the gas aspect. That's why you've got the, the cap on the dome on top of the, the AD vessel. 
And then there's a, a, a slurry, um, which is in two forms, either a solid form and a liquid form, and that, that all goes off um, after pasteurization to farms um, close to London. So uh, our particular food waste facility um, is in Surrey, uh, and, and it goes off um, to farms close by. However, um, of course, if we can prevent food in the first instance, that's um, ultimately what we need to be aiming for. Um, just, just some um, facts on, on the next slide, um, please, Kendall. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a staggering amount of, of food in the UK that's going to waste. Um, you can pick out uh, 2.6 billion apples, 2.6 billion slices of bread. A lot of baked goods um, go, go to waste. Um, and it's a great shame. There's, there's um, not only embedded carbon in all of these things, um, but also a, a huge water foot, footprint. For instance, um, a kilogram of beef, I know beef um, uh, gets a bad rap environmentally, but a kilogram of beef um, has 15 and a half thousand liters of water as well. So there's a significant carbon content, but also loads of water that's gone into the, the, um, the, the irrigation of the crops to feed the animal, the animals drinking, um, and then through the supply chain. Um, Unknown one, a kilogram of chocolate. I mean, that, that is a significant amount of chocolate, but that's 24,000 liters of water. Um, and cheese has also got a big water footprint. So not only um, is, it, is, is it a waste um, in terms of carbon, in terms of um, water, um, also uh, it, it costs the UK economy um, an equivalent of about five to 600 pounds per household. What can we do about it? Um, be advocates. Um, there's there's uh, a, a lot of information on the Love Food Hate Waste website. Um, there are also some nifty apps uh, like Olio and Too Good To Go, um, where you can either either go and get some really bargain discounts and and pick up um, food that was going to waste, or um, you can list some of your stuff. Um, and then, yeah, just use your freezers properly, um, understand the difference between a best before date and a use by date. Um, and uh, I, won't, I, 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 I won't officially condone it, but yeah, uh, use by dates, you can, you can also use your, your, your sensors and, and see if something's still edible. Um, and then freeze things, of course. Okay, I th think we, uh, we've got one more slide on, on uh, non-recyclables. So a quick one here. Um, Non-recyclables, often in, 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 uh, in London and increasingly in the UK, they're going to energy from waste facilities, which is better than landfill. Um, we short tip our uh, non-recyclables onto controlled barges and they move down the River Thames, um, which means that those lorries can uh, continue their work and, and also don't pr produce as much air pollution. Uh, and that goes off to an energy from waste facility, which, which, which produces a renewable energy for 160,000 homes in London. And it's run by a company called Core Environmental. But quite a lot of the council um, recycling in London is, is going to energy from waste. Okay, um, now we will jump onto our facility tour of our facility in, in East London. Let me get my screen sharing. Okay. Waste management company, servicing over two and a half thousand customers throughout okay? the United Kingdom. We accept all categories of wastes. Here in our tipping hall, our vehicle is delivering dry mix recycling to the materials recovery facility. We can accept materials from both commercial and municipal customers. Up to 140,000 tonnes are processed each year. Here we are in the first quality control cabin where we pull out any unacceptable waste such as food or electrical equipment that may block the machinery. The recycling then goes on to various mechanical processes that separate the paper from the plastic and the metals and so on. The polishing screens sort by shape. Two-dimensional papers and card go one way 
whereas three-dimensional metals and plastics go another. Optical separators remove plastic bags from the paper and cart. An air jet blows the plastic away. In the second quality control cabin, paper and card is checked and any remaining contamination removed. 18 tonnes of recycling pass along the belts every hour. The metals and plastics are separated using optical equipment. Three near-infrared machines pull out different polymers of plastics. Here we see electromagnets removing ferrous metals, in other words iron and steel, and eddy currents removing non-ferrous metals, such as aluminium. The resulting separated paper, card, plastics and metals are baled. Each bale can weigh up to one tonne. At the end of the line, the recycling is available to be sent to reprocessing, where it is made into new paper, card, tins, bottles and many other things. You can help the environment by putting your recycling in the correct bin. At Bywaters, we make recycling easy. Amazing, thank you, Ed. I'm just popping on to share my screen again because I actually think, don't want to speak too soon, but I think we actually did a, a good job of doing a little screen share hand over there. <laughs> but Indeed. I think, think we're good can you see that slide are you happy with that yeah all good thank you lovely i'll let you finish off that's a relief to know that the audio came through from the virtual tour um we, we developed that video for vr headsets um actually um which which we use uh at our customer sites to engage them get them to understand about the recycling process but we are open for visitors under um, normal time, so in, in a few months' time, we'll, we'll be able to, to take people um, for a, a walking tour around the facility. Um, it's obviously amazing to see um, in, in the first person. Uh, all right, um, some challenges now um, in terms of the new normal and, and um, what we need to deliver going forward. So engaging with um, our customers is is a, um, a challenge. We we like to be customer facing and, and see people in person, understand their sites, um, and provide um, tips and tricks on on how to improve their recycling. But we are, are doing more online events such as um, this. It's it's really nice to talk to all of you and also developing some training packages um, through online portals for our customers. There's loads of PPE, about billions and billions of items of PPE, which is not recyclable and unfortunately will end up in recycling streams um, because people see a bin and they want to dispose of, of items. So we, we, we are working actively with customers around bin placement and correct signage um, for PPE disposal. And uh, the backlash against plastics, um, it's, it's quietened down somewhat um, while the pandemic has been go ongoing, but, but it, it, it um, will continue and for good reason. Um, there uh, would be potentially more plastic in the ocean by 2050 than sea life. Um, so we, we have to change w what we do in terms of our use of plastic and move to reusable, reusable where we can <laughs> and then also um, uh, in, in increasing biodegradable such as vegware. So challenges around um, implementing that and getting segregation correct. It goes off to a, a similar process to anaerobic digestion. Um, it's called um, in vessel composting, but we really need to have pretty clean streams of bioplastics and food. Um, so there's segregation challenges <laughs> around that and, and maybe there'll be some Q and A stuff in our session uh, later we can discuss that. Um, and then moving to waste reduction, 
um, working with um, customers to consolidate their supply chains and the, and the packaging that's arriving at site in the first instance, um, taking back um, uh, glass bottles from our, our lab and NHS customers um, and um, wooden pallets and so forth. So waste reduction in, in the first instance. Okay, next next slide. Um, yeah, just a bit of a, um, a, a, an, an inspirational call um, to do as much as you can. You've tuned in, you're super interested. And really the greatest threat um, to our planet is the belief that somebody else will save it. So we all need to do as much as we can um, to uh, be advocates for a more sustainable way of being um, and, and very much being leaders um, in making those changes. Um, another couple of slides and um, I'll hand over. Next slide. There we go. Um, just some some devastation on 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 plastics in global oceans, but big brands are moving quickly. Unilever um, has a consumer base of 2.5 billion humans using Unilever products on a daily basis, and they're moving very quickly to incorporate recycled content and create that demand at the back end of um, the recycling process um, for plastics in their their consumer goods. Um, many countries have banned single-use plastics, in, in, including China. Um, a lot of the, um, the plastic is arising in Asia, but they're, they're making changes on that side of the world as well, thankfully. Um, last slide, um, we've, we've got uh, some biodiversity loss, um, and it was really acute um, in the last few years with, with Amazon. But uh, we've seen great local campaigns by Greenpeace um, targeting Tesco and partic particular supermarket brands around the meat, meat consumption and, and where animals are getting their feed from. All right, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, that was super interesting. I love the talk. I know that you're right, there's been loads of talk about biodiversity as well um, in recent in recent weeks, months. Um, I know David Attenborough has been doing a lot as well. So um, yeah, thank you. Um, I've seen some questions come through already, so I think there'll be some um, some more more food for thought when we get to the Q and A at the end. Um, thanks so much, um, Ed. Uh, Zinnia, are you are you there? See you in a minute. Hi there. Yes. Hello. Hi. Are you able to pop on your video? I can't. So you, I can't start because um, the host has stopped it. Oh. Um, Try that. There we go. Great. Hooray. Hello. Um, Hi. Thanks, Ed. Hi, Zinia. Over to you. Um, just let me just let me know when you want to move on to the slide deck. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you can uh, move on. So, hi everyone. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm from First Mile, and basically going to chat um, through today about how um, we can kind of drive sustainability through the waste and recycling chain. Um, if you move on to the next slide. So just a little bit about First Mile first. Essentially, we are um, predominantly a waste and recycling company. We serve over 30,000 businesses, mainly based in London and Birmingham. We put sustainability and service at the heart of what we do and really build our sort of entire organization around that, investing in a lot in technology and innovation to help us um, really drive sustainability and service throughout what we do. Um, you can kind of see that our sort of vision there is to eradicate waste by making it possible to recycle everything. And you know, we really do believe that we have to move towards a future where waste um, no longer exists. And by creating a, a lot of, sort of recycling solutions, this helps to solve part of the problem. It also comes a lot down to kind of designing um, products in the right way um, as, as well. Um, we're called First Mile because essentially we do the first mile of waste's journey. So we, we collect it, um, sort it and take it on to a better place, um, sometimes taking it to bywaters as well. Uh, 
we also we also work with a lot of brands as well so partnering with brands to help them provide end of life solutions for their um, for their customers as well so once their customers are finished with the product what can they do with it so for example we work with hunter helping their customers to recycle um kind of old, their old wellies they send it back to us we um, send it on to one of our processors who shred them turn them into surface um, arena for um, surfacing for horse arenas and playgrounds so always looking to try and find innovative um, solutions to keep materials in our economy um, next slide so essentially we have two missions one of which is to make waste management and recycling easy and the second one is to help businesses be as sustainable as possible um, if you move on to the next slide please Kendall and really, this is because we don't want to create one problem through solving another. So we don't want to be contributing a lot to carbon emissions through transportation, for example, um, in a bid to recycle more. And as with any kind of waste management and recycling company, we should all be looking to help um, our customers reduce their waste, recycle more, and ultimately reduce impact um, throughout everything that we do. Next slide. And for us, um, you know, this is a bit of a kind of downer slide, but it, it kind of hammers home why recycling is really important. So the UK produces over 200 million tonnes of waste each year, um, some of which will um, undoubtedly make its way to all parts of um, all around the globe, um, Pacific, the Pacific Ocean garbage patch being one which is I think around about three times the size of France. If you don't know much about it, it's definitely worth um, a Google. It's quite horrifying and um, might sort of stimulate you into recycling more and sort of reducing your reducing your waste. Um, it's no secret as well that our world is fast running out of raw materials, that climate change is happening. But amid, amidst all of this, the UK recycling rates are stagnant. So I think in the UK as a whole, they're around about 40% and London kind of hovering around about the 30, 32% mark as well. If you move on to the next slide. So this is you know, quite an obvious point, but I think it, it again needs saying and repeating for people to really kind of understand that Waste has gone, like when we throw something in the bin, waste has gone forever and it can never be brought back into our economy. So helping people to get into the mindset that you might be throwing something of value away is really important. Whereas recycling, you are, by recycling something, we're keeping it in the economy and enabling it to still retain value and sometimes even up its value. If you move on. So recycling ha has a very positive impact on climate change. Um, amongst a few things, it reduces emissions from landfill and incineration. It saves energy in the manufacturing process and it avoids the extraction of new and natural resources. If you move to the next slide, actually recycling is often considered as the seventh resource supplying 40% of the planet's raw material needs. We do have a sort of finite amount of um, natural resources on our planet. So as we grow in population and continue to use what the planet is providing for us, we will eventually um, run out of resources. And that's where recycling comes in. You know, again, going back to that point of throwing stuff in the bin really is a complete waste. But if we can recycle it and keep it in our in our world and economy, then we can stop using um, those resources um, from the planet. If you move to the next slide, thanks. So what I've sort of tried to do here is put a very kind of basic overview of the um, waste and recycling journey right from um, the delivery point of when your waste and recycling company might deliver, um, de might, excuse me. Uh, might deliver um, your sacks or your bins on all the way to when it then um, comes back on reporting and data. So you can kind of see throughout this chain, there's a lot of opportunity where we can look to reduce impact. So take transportation, for example, ensuring that our fleet is as green as possible, um, electric, using electric delivery vehicles or ultra low emission, let's say, um, 
excuse me, ultra low emission zone um, uh, collection vehicles. We're not quite there on electric heavy good vehicles just yet. Um, in terms of the facilities, and Ed mentioned before about um, Bywater's facility being um, with the solar panels, again, trying to make sure that as many facilities as possible that are used in the waste and um, recycling supply chain are run on renewable energy. And um, then in terms of end destinations, and I'll come on to this in the next slide, making sure that we're choosing the most sustainable end destination as possible for waste and recycling. And then finally, the reporting side of things. Um, more and more businesses are having to um, provide more detailed reports um, for sustainability reasons and looking at their impact. And again, making sure that we can track it, um, track recycling and waste throughout its journey and look at its impact um, from carbon emissions perspective as well. Uh, if you move on to the next slide. So from a kind of broad level, essentially we have three end destinations. So landfill, incineration and recycling. So waste essentially we're looking at going, taking it between landfill and incineration. Now both kind of have their, have their cons so to speak. Landfill takes up an incredible amount of space. Um, I think there are actually near on 500 landfill sites in the UK, many of which are, um, aren't active anymore, but that's still a lot of rubbish that's buried under the ground. Um, it's quite interesting to, to Google landfill sites and see whereabouts they are. Um, so they take up a lot of space. They also um, produce a lot of greenhouse gases, particularly methane. Um, now incineration and taking kind of using energy from waste facilities is good on the one hand that it can um, like capture and be and have energy that's put back into the national grid, but obviously that's not without releasing um, carbon emissions as well. So it's not the perfect solution, um, but certainly better than landfill. And then recycling and in recycling, I would also include the anaerobic digestion that Ed mentioned as well from a food recycling perspective. And there's sort of two, almost sort of two sides to recycling as kind of downgrading it, um, or there is recycling trying to keep it as circular as possible and maintain its maintain its value. So, um, for example, glass can be recycled back into glass, but quite often what happens is it's actually um, downgraded into the lights of road aggregate. Um, if paper can be turned back into paper, again, it's retaining its value. Sometimes it's downgraded and turned into the likes of tissue. Um, the recycling industry is constantly evolving, um, which is really great. And particularly plastics recycling has, is coming on leaps and bounds um, at, at the moment. So whereas what a lot of things used to be quite difficult from a plastics perspective to recycle like particularly those flexible plastics like kind of plastic bags and um poly bags cellophane things like that a lot of that can now go through a chemical recycling process where um it can be turned back into oil and used for creating plastic pellets and new plastic products um so there is a lot of um yeah a lot of sort of um progression in the recycling industry, even textiles recycling as well. Um, sometimes textiles are sort of shredded and used to be for filler, like in car seats, kickboxing bags, etc. But now there's a lot of fiber to fiber textile recycling advancements. So being able to turn them back into actual usable materials and fiber to create new clothes or fabrics. Um, on to the next slide. Uh, so yeah, essentially you can have good waste management and, and poor waste management. And um, some of these sort of ideas uh, um, or points are headlines that we sometimes come across in the media. So you might separate your materials, but they all end up in the same place anyway, or your waste is sent to landfill, which releases toxic greenhouse gases, or your waste and recycling is exported overseas to countries not equipped to deal with it. And this is quite often when it then makes its way back into um, rivers and, and our oceans. So again, from a company perspective, it's really worth doing your due diligence on who, you're, on who your waste and recycling provider is to make sure that um, the waste is being tracked and it's being treated in the right way. Um, next slide, please, Kendall. But it's worth saying that 
it's not just down to um, your waste and recycling provider to do all the effort. It's also down to you, your business, your customers and your employees. Um, this is a picture of a um, contents of a mixed recycling bag. So at first mile, we do um, sort of waste audits. Sometimes that's spot checks or sometimes they are um, sort of planned with our customers because they want to find out how well they are recycling and what their sort of true recycling rate is. This is actually um, a mixed recycling sack. So in um, our mixed recycling sack, um, DMR, as Ed referred to it earlier in his presentation, we um, accept paper, card and 3D plastics. Um, we don't actually accept glass, but as you can see the contents of this, there is glass, food, um, tissue paper, straws. Um, Kendall, if you click, um, the animation should come on. So yeah, all sorts that isn't um, accepted. And actually I think they only got one thing right in this whole entire bag of mixed recycling, which was they put in one plastic container, which I think was a um, used milk bottle. So usually this would all be lost and gone to, gone to general waste. Um, at first mile, we kind of have a pre-sorting facility. So it would have gone through our picking line and we would have been able to at least pick out the glass to rescue that. But again, this is just contamination um, is, is a real waste and means that all of this is lost recycling, essentially. Um, next slide, please. So from a kind of company perspective, uh, if you really want to kind of step up your waste and recycling, before you can reduce your waste, you need to know what's in it. Um, this kind of picture that I've got here, it sort of looks a bit like a casino table, but it's our waste audit table. And we do waste audits with our, um, our customers to help them find out across sort of 40 bags or so, um, what typically are the types of materials that are ending up in their bins. So if we move on to the, um, the next slide, it's once you've found out kind of what's in your waste um, and you've selected your provider based on sort of sustainability requirements, um, it's then about working out what services you need. So more than likely you will have a general waste service. There's very few businesses that have managed to go completely zero waste um, so far. So if you are having a general waste service, again, try and ensure that your provider is a zero to landfill one. Um, and then next, you'd probably either have a mixed recycling or a segregated stream. As we saw on the kind of image I showed you before, the problem about mixed recycling is it's, it's often confusing for customers, for employees, and can result in quite high contamination levels. So it's thinking about whether you might be better off to segregate, um, to segregate your streams. Um, so for example, having a separate paper stream, a separate glass um, stream, a separate cardboard stream. Um, food waste, Ed, again, Ed mentioned it before, but legislation will come in soon where food waste will be compulsory for businesses and indeed homes further in the future. Um, but food waste is, um, is really easy to, um, to recycle if it's kept separate. It also will reduce the cost of, um, of, your, of your waste and recycling services because by putting food waste in your waste bin, it adds a lot of weight, it takes up space. Um, and therefore, um, it's, it's definitely sort of worth um, the worth recycling your food. Um, it also is one of the key contaminants of a mixed recycling sack, so important to keep it separate. And then the fourth point is adding ad hoc streams. So going back to that point of what else are you creating a lot of waste up for? If you are a coffee shop, you might be produ um, producing a lot of coffee ground waste, coffee cup waste. Um, so can you recycle your coffee cup separately or your coffee grounds or indeed your compostable packaging? Um, you might have create, produce a lot of batteries, um, anything like that. So trying to look at what you produce a lot of um, and then putting it in a in making sure you recycle it separately. And then last thing on to the um, final slide, which is just a few actions for, um, for you to take away. Uh, if you can just move one on, Kendall, thank you. So um, whether you are a manufacturer producing materials or you are just using materials and products in your business, making sure it's easy to recycle. 
Um, the use of um, recycled materials as well. So again, supporting that circular economy, are you using recycled plastics, recycled paper? Um, going really sort of as, putting as much effort as you can to stop contamination and recycling more. So looking at what those services, additional services you can put in place to reduce, to boost your recycling rate. Um, little tactics like removing under desk bins. I know probably a lot of us aren't in the office at the moment, but they're a killer for kind of people putting food waste into your under desk bin, when actually if you had a central food, um, food waste bin, that would be better. Really educating and engaging your employees. Um, we run recycle workshops for a lot of our customers, um, sharing your monthly recycling reports if you have them with your employees as well making it as easy as possible, making sure the signage is really clear, you've got optimum bin, bin placement. Um, being greenwashing savvy, so what I mean by that is quite a lot of times you might buy a coffee cup and it's got a green picture of a green symbol or you get some packaging which looks like it's recyclable, um, but often it's not and it's sort of a way of the company making you think that it's more eco than it actually is, so being vigilant. Um, carry out a waste audit and um, really great to again see what you're doing wrong and where you can recycle more and the final point is just keeping um, keeping measuring and tracking your recycling rate and co2 savings so that you can look at where you can improve, um, improve over time and that's it from me yeah, thank you so much and sorry for the small tech um you handled it like a pro when all the slides were skipping on that's what you get when you have two screens with zoom tech <laughs> on one side and the slides on the other so thank you um really really interesting thank you for giving us some um takeaways uh that we can we'll share in the email afterwards so everyone that attends will get the um the follow-up email with all the actions they can take um we were also we were on a round table with um the rwha um the other day and they were talking about the hunter welly initiatives we didn't realize that they did that with you so that's really exciting um so i'd like to um i know sorry just welcome ed and zinnia back we've got some questions to go through we've got about 15 minutes um so i know we've had loads come through ed you've answered a few already so thank you for doing that um as well super um, jammy in the background um so i'm going to go through in um order of how many likes each of the questions have got um zinnia are you able to join us again for the q a um uh if possible yes. um thank you sorry <laughs> so um first question come through with um lots of uh, likes against it so what does contaminated recycling mean and what constitutes something being contaminated um Zinnia, i feel like you maybe you could pick that one up um given the last few slides you shared yeah so essentially contaminated recycling is when the wrong materials have been put in the wrong recycling bin so for example you might have a paper recycling um bin and in it people have put uh, food waste, for example. So that's the kind of risks then that that whole batch of recycling might be contaminated. So to avoid contamination, essentially it's keeping to um, keeping strict with what you can put in that recycling bin and trying to get, get it right. Thank you. Um, um, and and I'll, I'll just add a, 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 um, a, a rule of thumb or a trick we have is uh, in, in, in terms of cleaning um, your your containers, um, particularly food containers, um, they don't have to be squeaky clean. They don't have to go through the dishwasher. If you can hold them above your head, it's a tip test, and there's not stuff going to drip on your on your head. It's okay to go through recycling. So we 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 can handle a bit of residue um, through the process because the plastics go go off to um, a washing and and uh, segregation and and chipping um, facility afterwards. So that's that's just something to encourage people. We, we'd we'd rather have um, a, a, a lot of pretty clean re recycling than, than people be dissuaded from doing it because they've got to get everything super clean. That's actually super interesting because I always like properly clean all my plastics and stuff. So actually, it's yeah. good to know. Don't worry, I will keep doing it anyway. But um, no, yeah, no, I think actually... that's a good point though in terms of what Ed makes is, and it comes out to this: we don't want to create another problem um, from solving. Mm -hmm. From solving another and we don't want to um, fuel sort of water wastage by recycling so actually we don't want people to waste lots of water cleaning their plastics when actually we will do it um, to a certain level. Okay maybe I will not do them so thoroughly then. <laughs> okay cool um, so in a similar vein um, does one wrong item in a recycling bin mean the whole bag will be sent to landfill? 
Um, I'll, I'll, let Ed, I'll let Ed answer this one. Um, no, no, uh, we, we've we've got a degree of tolerance that we can we can handle, and and the, the system's designed so that it, it can pull out contaminants, and um, whether they're large or smaller contaminants. So, um, as as um, with um, first mile, we'll notify customers uh, um, as well. So so most most of your waste providers will will inform you if there's an issue with contamination. Um, also in part because there's there's um, just different disposal charges associated. It's more more expensive to to deal with, of course. Um, so we can we can handle some contaminants, but food waste is um, the biggest issue. Um, it it it, in, it um, interacts with um, the other fibrous materials like cardboard and paper and bear in mind those are organic by nature so you imagine some food waste which gets squished and 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 sandwiched in one of our cardboard bales and then that goes off on the back of a truck to get exported it takes a couple of weeks till it gets to the reprocess so that 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 anaerobic breakdown process will will be happening um, at that at that time um, so yeah if we can give information and and um, Zinni, I really love your segregation tables um, that you show that's super handy to get customers to understand exactly what what they can do to improve amazing thank you i'm um, so looking out for food waste as the biggest corporate is good good tip um so I had a question come in from farah um apologies if it was covered and i missed it but how much does clinical waste contribute to the stats what are the options for improving the outcomes for clinical waste for example needles and wrappers for daily insulin injections bandages gloves etc so probably a question that's more relevant maybe at the moment, but um, yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, is that uh, either of you able to pick up on that one? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to. Um, we, we, we have um, quite a few NHS um, customers and um, associated with that is um, a lot of work around getting recycling out of the infectious waste streams mm -hmm. um, that, that, that saves trust a significant amount of money um, is, is better environmentally for them as well. Um, but with, with clinical waste, um, a, a, quite a lot of the packaging um, is a laminate of um, a, a plastic film um, and some, some kind of paper backing. And, and in fact, sometimes the paper is um, a, um, a hybrid of paper and plastic. So quite a lot of the time that the, the clinical packaging, um, which is necess necessary to keep things sterilized, um, is quite difficult to recycle. Um, clinical waste must go through, um, you know, genuine clinical waste, as, as in sharps and um, infectious swabs. They, they must go for the correct treatment method. Um, it's it's very dangerous for operatives if those come into any of the general waste or recycling streams because they can pierce the the sacs and then um, and then injure operatives' legs. Yeah, thank you. Um, really good point on the uh, yeah danger aspect of that as well. Thanks, Ed. Um, so in terms of, so we've got actually questions keep coming in, so thank you. Um, I've got a question from Lauren. Um, she says, I'm new to recycling, so I was wondering why it's necessary to separate waste into different bins. Um, I know that we just looked at one of your mixed mixed bags in here as well. Um, so uh, maybe if you could maybe pick up that question. Yeah, sure. So um, there's a few kind of different reasons why um, why you might choose to separate your waste. Uh, so one of it is that it simply makes it um, more simple for your customers or your employees if it's one bin for one thing and just to avoid that contamination. Um, the second is getting a higher quality um, sort of recy recycling out of it. So if the if it's purely paper that's kept in a paper bin, then that doesn't need to go through a, um, a MRF where, where it is then separated from other kind of materials and it can be changed straight into, recycled straight back into higher quality um, paper resources. So you'll just get a better recycling rate from keeping those materials separate. You saw the um, the virtual tour that um, that Ed gave, and there's a lot of work that goes into separating um, all of these materials, and it's great that, that we can do that. But if um, you're still not getting a hundred percent perfect separation sort of recycling from doing that, so if it can be separated at source, i.e., within the business, it makes for a much better um, recycling journey. Hmm. Yeah, amazing. 
Thank you. Um, and kind of tied into this, actually, given that um, what happens um, when waste is originally created and sorted. Um, so from someone uh, anonymous attendee, but do waste companies generally provide signage and staff training? Um, so well, I guess both Ed and I can probably answer this from our individual um, companies. Mm -hmm. um, certainly we do at First Mile, we provide posters um, on request or they're free to download from our website. Again, they're specific to our own um, company. So um, if you had a different waste um, and management supplier, I wouldn't say downloading our posters because you might have different rules in terms of what you're allowed to put in different streams. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure a lot, a lot like us do. And again, upon request, we will do um, staff uh, recycling workshops as well. Thank you. Ed, did you want to add anything to that? No, I am much the same as ourselves. Um, yeah, first of all, I'll do a great job in terms of segregation and signage. Um, and yeah, we have, we've got similar competencies. Wonderful. Thank you. So everyone knows where to go if they need signage or training. Um, cool. So final question, actually, we've done really well. We've whiz I don't think this has ever happened before, maybe once. Um, so is comprehensive recycling doable without a waste management service for an SME? So is, sorry, I'll say it again because I whizzed through it. So is comprehensive recycling doable without a waste management service for an SME? Um, I mean, it, it, you, by, by nature, you, you will be creating some waste through business activities um, and whether you have a, a collection by your local authority um, or by a, a private sector waste management company, um, there, there will be something arising there, whether it's um, your office paper or, or batteries or printer toners. Um, so um, the, the, the local councils um, are, are often quite competitive um, for um, smaller businesses. Um, but um, I, I, th I think from a, from a private sector um, organization, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to recycle more waste and more, more of your waste streams, and you'll, you'll probably get some better reporting and feedback, I'd say. Yeah, and I think on that as well, probably the councils might be a bit more likely to um, send to landfill sometimes rather than incineration. So it's worth bearing that in mind as well. Thank you. Um, so we've actually managed to get through all of our questions in the Q&A. Um, so thank you so much both. Um, really, really grateful. Grateful for that. Um, I, I know personally have actually learned loads today already. So thank you so much. Um, just going to wrap up with a few final um, notes for everyone. Um, so we will be sharing um, in a follow-up email um, the contact details for Ed and Zinnia. So if you want to get in touch, please do. We'll also include the slide deck from today's session, as well as the recording, which will be shared afterwards. Um, we also have um, a the Planet Mark Waste Toolkit, which is free to download. It's interactive. We're just um, working through all our current toolkits and it looks really snazzy. So we'll include that in the follow-up email as well so everyone can have a browse, just a quick screenshot of what it looks like there. Um, and also wanted to let everybody know that we are doing a, well, offering a 30 minute networking session um, right after the webinar now. So um, I'm going to launch a poll. And if you'd like to come along, um, please do let us know. I will update everyone as the results come in. Um, so hopefully you should be able to see that poll. Excellent. Some things coming in, answers coming in. Amazing. Not a single no yet, which is always good. Um, okay, amazing. So we've got, um, not everyone has answered, but um, it's about a 50-50 split of yes and yes, not this time, but next time. So we will go ahead and move into the um, Zoom networking session. Um, let me just post that link in the chat. Sorry, everybody. Um, I will post that now um, so that everybody can join. Um, sorry, everybody slow there so if anybody wants to join the zoom meeting now we'll hop over onto that in a second um, and join you there um, and then the final thing I wanted to say was massive thank you to Zinnia and Ed for your time today for sharing all your knowledge with us it's been really really interesting um, and I'm really glad that we've been able to record this and we'll share it afterwards for anyone that wasn't able to watch it um, so a massive massive thank you again look forward to being in touch and um, look forward to seeing everybody at our next webinar in a few weeks time so thank you so much and speak soon